welcome to Worship with the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ventura. Today, we celebrate our annual Flower Communion service and also the bridging of one of our dear youth, Abigail Austin, as we recognize her transition from youth to young adult. It is a day to consider how we are, all of us, always blossoming. Mm -hmm. I am the Reverend Dana Warshnop, and it is my deep honor and constant delight to serve this church. And I am Worship Associate Krista Mendelson. We welcome all into this virtual space made sacred by our presence together. We begin each service by acknowledging that the land each of us is on is the ancestral home of indigenous peoples. For us in Ventura County, this is the Chumash. As they blossomed and continue to blossom upon this land, may we honor their legacy as we walk reverently upon this blooming earth. So just one announcement uh, today after the service is our annual meeting where we will vote on the uh, slate for the board of trustees and for the leadership development committee and also pass our budget. So uh, af go off after the service into coffee hour breakout rooms. And then around 1130, you'll come back and, or at 1130, you'll come back into the main sanctuary and we will begin our meeting. <sighs> Doing the business of this congregation. Let us breathe and arrive here together. On this day, another day of the journey that holds within it new opportunity to blossom, to blossom and be. Let us enter sacred space. We hope that everyone here has a chalice or a candle to light and something to light it with. Let us all light our chalices together. We begin our service with these words in two voices by Edwin Muir. The way. Friend, I have lost the way. The way leads on. Is there another way? The way is one. I, I must retrace the track. It's lost and gone. Back. I, I must travel back. None goes there. None. Then I'll make here my place. The road runs on. Stand still and set my face. The road leaps on. Stay here, forever stay. None stays here, none. I cannot find the way. The way leads on. Oh, but the, the places I have passed. That journey is done. And what will come at last? The way leads on. Come, let us worship together. Please join me in singing. Oh, yeah, yeah. We are going. Heaven knows where we are going, but we know within we will get there. Heaven knows where we'll get there, but we know we But we'll get there. 
heaven knows how we will get there, but we know we will. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Teresa. It is such a delight. We have Teresa James with us again this morning, uh, and it's just such a gift to have your music with us. No, it's my it's my gift to be here with you. So thank you. Thank you. <sighs> so the road does lead on, and heaven knows where we are going, and yet. Almost always, we manage to get there or to get somewhere, which is as good as there would have been. I said to us all, to myself and to us all a year ago, that COVID time was ripping away the comfortable illusion, the illusion that we have much or really any control over our lives. And often we find ourselves on the road somewhere, particularly in COVID time, we have been finding ourselves on the road somewhere between the territories of stressful and um, terrifying. And yet there are also signposts pointing toward new and exciting, sometimes even fun, fun this way. Those we are celebrating today, those who are at the beginning of the journey, passing education milestones like entering middle school, graduating high school, yay, or college, yay. I think sometimes at those milestones that we think that finally we will get to the place where there will be smooth sailing. I do remember looking back when I was a teenager thinking, you know, 35, when I was 35, I was really gonna have it all together. And, and yet uh, I don't mean to rip away all the illusions all of your illusions this morning. Yet the truth is that we are, all of us, always blooming, always becoming. And ultimately this is really good news. It is even the good news of our faith tradition. For we are growing and regrowing, walking paths yet untrod. This is what we do with lives that are always blooming. Being open to new possibilities, new understandings of ourselves and how the world works. Holy flexibility we've been talking about in this COVID time. Holy beingness in ourselves and in all people. This is what guides us. The road will be muddy and rough at times and heaven knows how we will get there. And yet somehow we know we will eventually. 
hopefully taking the exits for fun and exciting as often as possible, and even spending some time in the towns of love, satisfaction and accomplishment. Yes, the village of rest. On this day, we celebrate our annual flower communion and the bridging of one of our dear youth. And on this day, let us remember that we are blossoming always again and again. All of us are blossoming. Seeds from whatever flower you are right now will fall to the ground and you will grow and blossom anew. I hope also that all will spend some time, some time in the sweet town of community, which is an ephemeral place that shows up again and again in expected and unexpected times and places. It is also often right next to the hamlets of spirit, rest, and kindness. I often find fields of flowers in the town called community and its environs, a place where my own flower self can blossom and I find and know friends. Sometimes I help tend the field and sometimes I Sometimes others offer me water when I am parched, warming light when I am cold. We are always blossoming, always seeking, discovering, changing, growing, being simply lovely. And now we come to a celebration of blossoming of one among us who has arrived at last to a significant milestone along the road, the road that will indeed lead on. Good morning, everyone. My name is Fidelity. I'm the religious education coordinator for our congregation. Today, we celebrate the Unitarian Universalist Bridging Ceremony, a rite of passage where we celebrate what our high school seniors have brought to our community and send them forth into the world with the strength and values that Unitarian Universalism and this congregation have given them. So today we honor Abigail Austin. Abby has been with UUCV since she was four years old participating in activities such as the adult and youth choirs, the Our Whole Lives OWL program, Camp de Beneville Pines, the coming of age program, and our religious education programs with our RE teachers, where Abby has enjoyed exploring both the world religions and our Unitarian Universalist values. Abby, you have come to a point in life where society treats you as an adult in many ways. This can be a confusing time because you will learn and soon see that there are still restrictions as there will be all your life and many people will not treat you as an adult. Some may do this out of habit, some because they don't look at you clearly enough. Your religious community, I believe, has a responsibility to remember that you are a young adult now, worthy to be granted the privileges as well as the responsibilities of adulthood. And we will. We share with you this morning two videos from your parents, the first from Evan Austin, the second from Jesse Austin. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why it's not a question but a lesson learned in time it's something unpredictable but in the end it's right i hope you've had the time of your life Take the 
of photographs and still frames in your mind Hang it on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos of memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right I hope you've had the time of your life It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you've had the time of your life. It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you had the time of your life. Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. In its brief course lie all the verities and realities of your existence, the bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of beauty. For yesterday is but a dream, and tomorrow is only a vision. But today, well lived, makes every yesterday a dream of happiness, and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. Kalidasa. Abigail, I'll never forget the day you came into our lives. The moment I saw your face, my heart sang with love and adoration. And thinking about that moment still makes my heart full. Your journey from that bald, happy, gorgeous little baby to the amazing person you are today has been both a gift and a struggle to be a part of. Sending you out into the world will also be a gift and a struggle, but it is one that is necessary and inevitable in the life of a parent. Knowing you as the force of nature that you are, I'm excited to see what you choose to do in your adult life and who you choose to share your journeys with. So many parents that I have talked to have expressed such reluctance to let their children move away and move on. They're so worried about their children failing or getting hurt or getting in trouble. And even though I myself am a warrior by nature, I've been surprised to realize that I am not scared or worried for you at all. There is a peace within me, knowing that you are a strong, intelligent, and kind person. And that because of these things, you will be fine. Actually, you'll be better than fine. I am so excited for you to explore the world and learn about yourself and find your place and tell me about it. I'm excited for your siblings to see you go off and become an adult and lead the way for them. I'm excited for you to grow in ways you could never grow at home because that kind of growth only comes from struggling and stumbling down your own path. And I hope you know that if your stumbles ever turn into falls, I will always be there. Not to pick you up, but to help you pick yourself up. And I am not the only one who will always be there. Your dad, grandpa, and I made a commitment to our church community when you were small. One of the main reasons we did that was because we wanted for our children a church home, a place to learn and grow and be supported in exploring this crazy world. And what we have contributed to our church has been to return to us 100 fold. We have built a web of community, of family that will support you as long as you need them to and whatever you need them to. If ever there was a time I couldn't help you, I know I could count on any number of people to have my back. I hope you can see the value in that, and I hope that you can find a place in your adult life for a spiritual home and family. These are my wishes for you, my daughter. I love you. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. 
The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Isaiah 55. Thank you, Evan and Jesse, for those wonderful and beautiful thoughts. So we are now going to invite in our congregation and Reverend Dana and Abby and everyone to join in on a bridging litany to celebrate and welcome Abigail into young adulthood. So Reverend Dana and I will both speak a line at the beginning and then Krista will lead the congregational response which will appear on a slide. So the congregation is all invited to unmute yourselves for your parts. Abby is here to join us too in our litany. Oh, it's Abigail, we bless you now as we give you over to your future. We see you now at a threshold moving from youth to young adulthood. We are the life. I cherish the friendships and memories created here. Thank you for being a community that encourages me to grow and accepts me for who I am. Today, I take my place beside you and I'm also on my own life's journey. And if everyone will remute themselves now. Uh... So congratulations, dear Abby. Uh, and if I can get, um, I, I have some props here. So is there a way for me to, get, right now on my screen? Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> There's three of us here. Nicely done, everyone. So Abigail, we have a gift bag for you, which includes, but is not limited to, a chalice made out of apricot wood by, made by, David Frank and chosen just for you. I will deliver this whole bag to your home sometime this week and then I'll get to see you in person. I leave you now in our bridging ceremony with these words. May the flame of your chalice light your path as you search for truth and meaning in your life. May it be a beacon for justice, equity, and compassion, all of which I know you have in great measure, and may they continue to blossom. May it, may, and may the, uh, May it forever, this flame forever remind you also of the love that we as a faith community hold for you. And there is an abundance of that love that we hold for you. And may you always remember that you always have a home here. We are here for you. You are part of us and we hope we will always be a part of you. Blessings, blessings on this next stage of your journey. May it be so. Each Sunday, this congregation gives away our collection to an organization in the larger community or to funds that help people in our own church. We now invite you to donate online. You'll see the link on the next slide, which will also be posted in the chat as a direct link. Our offering today goes to Global Glow, Girls Leading Our World, which creates and operates innovative programs to mentor girls to advocate for themselves and make their communities stronger. Seventh graders, Anaya and Tamara, 
identified food insecurity as a critical issue in their community. With the support of Global Glow, Anaya and Tamara worked to revive a neglected plot of land, turning it into a community garden that could support their families and neighbors with a steady supply of fresh produce. In bringing their vision to life, the girls practiced skills they learned in their GLOW Club, where older girls mentor younger ones. In this safe space for asking questions and absorbing new information, they tackled problems around food insecurity head on. They found out why families in their community had difficulty affording a healthy diet, as well as the systems that can prevent underserved communities from accessing nutritious food. Anaya and Tamara started much more than a garden. They started a cycle of positivity, coaching, and learning that has continued beyond the first harvest. I hope you'll give generously as you always do. Gazing out my window in the stillness of the morning First rays of dawn light the day I feel a golden glow begin to warm me As the darkness surrenders to another day Just like a seed when it's planted in a garden Can grow into the tallest tree It needs the air, it needs the sunlight, it needs the water To become all that it can be And I feel the spirit all around a single drop of water if God is a mountain I'm a tiny grain of sand all a part of the same eternal wonder God is I am God is I We are grateful for the generosity of this congregation, which weaves a tapestry of love that we call community. Each week, we lift up the joy and sorrows that have been shared in our community. There are two ways to submit a joy or sorrow. There's a link on our website, uuventura.org, or there's a link in the Thursday email bulletin, UUCV this week. When we are together in our physical sanctuary, we drop stones and water for each joy or sorrow that grace our lives. The ripples that go out remind us that we are connected here in our online sanctuary that we make each Sunday together, we see the image of ripples to help us remember that connection. And I invite you now to speak aloud or in your heart the names of wish, those you wish to celebrate or memorialize or those in need of the loving embrace of this beloved community. 
We also invite you to type names into our Zoom chat. For by invoking their names, you bring them into this circle of caring that we call community. May we be truly grateful for all that is our life. All right. Um, let me see. I'm, thank you. Am I sure. unmuted? Can you hear me? We can hear you and thank you so much for getting so deeply into that moment and sharing. Sorry, I was. So, I no. Was it was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. I have lots of uh, friends who are, you know, going through things. Um, <clears throat> please join me. We're going to sing uh, Mother Spirit, Father Spirit. We'll do all four verses. Um, and... Mother Spirit, Father Spirit, where are you? Our reading this morning is from Nesahualcoyotl, a 15th century ruler, scholar, warrior, architect, and poet in ancient Mexico. Flowers have come to refresh and delight you. You see them briefly as they dress themselves, spread their petals, perfect only in spring, countless golden flowers. The flowers have come to the skirt of the mountain. Yellow flowers, sweet flowers, precious vanilla flowers. The crow's dark magic flowers weave themselves together. They are your flowers, God. We only borrow them. Your flowered drum, your bells, your song. They are your flowers, God. Come. 
kind friends all gathered round Something I would say What brings us together here Has blessed us all today Love has made a circle That holds us all inside We're strangers or like family Loneliness can't hide You must give yourself to love If love is what you're Walk these mountains in the rain Learn to love the wind I've been up before the sunrise To watch the day begin I always knew I'd find you I just never did know how But like sunshine on is what you're after Open up your hearts to the tears and laughter and Give yourself to love Give yourself to Thank you, Teresa. When you suggested that song, I knew it would be perfect for both bridging and for flower communion and for all of us who are blossoming still. Good advice. And for Abigail on this particular threshold, for us all, remember, give yourself to love. Thank you. So this flower communion, this flower communion is a Unitarian ritual that is 98 years old this year. It was created 
1923, by Unitarian minister named a Unitarian minister named Norbert Norbert Chopak. And yes, that's him. Chopak was born in 1870 in Bohemia, which later became Czechoslovakia and is now the Czech Republic. He was raised Catholic, although he was an inveterate free thinker and was ordained as a Baptist minister as a young man. Yet he was also an inveterate challenger of the status quo. And he was just a bit of a rabble rouser and he had to flee his home in Eastern Europe with his wife and eight children in 1914 on the eve of the First World War. He came to the United States with his family. Chopek was charged in absentia for heresy by the Slovakian Baptist Church. And so he simply resigned. And before long, but after a few years in America, he was living in New Jersey, Chopek discovered the Unitarian Church. And in 1921, he and his wife Maya returned to their home homeland in Prague and started a Unitarian church there. And in 1923, he created the Flower Communion in place of some of the more traditional churchy rituals and practices that he longed to be free of. And in that church, which grew to 3,000 members eventually, everyone for their flower communion would bring a flower to church and play it, place it in a large central vase, which then symbolized the uniqueness of each individual and the coming together as a community. Chapek's wife, Maya, who was by then ordained as a Unitarian minister herself, brought this ritual back to the United States in 1940. And it was soon adopted in many congregations. And most of them, I think we all, most all of us do it now. For Maya had returned to America without her husband. Norbert had never stopped challenging authority and the powers that be. And when those were the Nazis in the 1930s, he did not stay quiet. Topek was arrested by the Gestapo and eventually he died in Dachau in 1942. And yet his spirit lives on in our flower communion and in the hymns he wrote, like Mother Spirit, Father Spirit. His radical spirit shines through that song, which was written in the 1920s and names God as both Mother and Father Spirit and begins with the divine feminine. This was beyond radical. 100 years ago, and it's still radical for far too many, I think, even today. His spirit also lives on in us, in our call to create a just world. Flower communion is a beautiful ritual, symbolizing a beautiful, unique, and diverse people made one. These are some of the flowers that were brought and not collected. Um, so I got to bring them home from our flower communion ceremony yesterday. So we hear Chapek spirit still in our flower communion, but we also hear it through the beauty and strength of community we also hear Chopik's call and commitment to resist oppression wherever it arises, wherever we see it. And Chopek knew, and we are reminded again and again, but especially in Flower Communion, that resisting 
oppression is something that is far more effective when we do it together. We are always blossoming, always seeking, discovering, changing, growing, being lovely. And we are also always resisting, challenging, reforming, reimagining a community of justice, equity, and fairness. The road leads on and heaven knows exactly where we are going or when or even how we will get there. And yet we also know we will be treading those muddy and rough roads together. We are going together an inspired, beautiful, spiritual, strong community of resistance, resilience, and always hope. Amen. And may it be so. I invite you now. Oh, no. One thing coming before we pray. Yesterday, many of you were able to come to our flower communion uh, ceremony outside on our church grounds. And we brought flowers and took another home and Fidelity created a flower communion craft in which everyone made a design for a flower for someone else to create and then created a flower with a design from someone else. And so the circle of life and love and beauty was continuing. And it was very sweet to see so many of you. Here are a few pictures that I mostly I took. Well, actually, they were all on my camera. <laughs> Sorry. Other people took them too. As Norbert Chopik taught us, each flower that people brought represented their own beautiful, unique, and amazing spirit. Together, we amassed over a little bit of time, a beautiful bouquet representing this amazing, lovely, resilient, strong community, a community which changes the world. And then as each person took a flower, they received a blessing of beauty and life from another church member in the form of the flower that they brought. And then many gathered around Fidelity's craft table to make even more flowers to share. In all, it was a lovely day. And if you couldn't make it, know that you are still ever always a part of this bouquet created by the abundance of your church community. And now, I invite you into a time of prayer with words adapted from Norbert Chopek. Hold up a flower if you have one with you. Holy beingness, blossoming energy of creativity and beauty, spirit of life which dwells within and among and beyond us this day and always. We ask thy blessing on these, thy messengers of friendship. May they remind us amid diversities of knowledge and gifts to be one in desire and affection and devotion. May we cherish our children and youth seeing mirrored in them our own continual blooming. May all who suffer with illness and pain know that all flowers, all individuals are welcome here and may they find comfort among us. May the lost be found and the broken be healed. 
May we find strength in the beauty of a single flower. May we find strength in the wildly blooming bouquet we are a part of. May we be strengthened by the knowledge that one spirit, the spirit of love, the spirit of love, love unites us. We give ourselves to that love. And may we endeavor together for a more joyful life for all. And may all those who are ill find healing. May those who are in despair find hope. May those who are without a home find shelter. And may those suffering in conflict and war throughout the world May they, may we all find peace. Amen. And blessed be. All right, please join me. We're going to sing This Little Light of Mine, hymn number 118. Um, we will do all three verses, I guess. It's the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. It's the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. It's the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. hands at the end there. <laughs> Please join Reverend Dana in extinguishing your chalice at home. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment, those we carry in our hearts until we are together again. So after the postlude, everyone will be again placed in breakout rooms for a virtual coffee hour. And you can join your group or opt out at that point. And uh, I invite you all in. If you are new among us, first, second, third time you've come and you'd like to join a special connecting room, breakout room, just stay in the main room and uh, our membership coordinator, uh, Jimmy Vasquez will, uh, will figure out who's there and we'll put you all together into a breakout room. And then remember at 1130, so you'll have a little bit less than half an hour at 1130, come back for our annual meeting, one and all. I leave you with these words from Joe Hardigree. 
blossoms of love and delight, reminding us of the hope that is in us. Blossoms of hope and light, which remind us of the hope that is within us and remind us that morning will follow the night. We are grateful for your message to give ourselves to love. Go forth in peace, go forth in good health, and yes, go forth in love and go forth and blossom. May it be so.